here we go, guys. Some of you have heard this, bear with me again for a second. Um, I'm starting out on this screen, which was the screen that you guys first saw when you registered, because I just wanna make sure that expectations are set at the very onset. I'm gonna primarily be covering KPARS workflows, you guys, which there are many of. And that's why I say cover the spectrum from manual use, which is interactive, to full automation, which would be using KPARS commands to insert records into batch queues and, and running processes and just having a lot of the process happen automatically. Um, so I'm gonna cover all of it in 45 minutes. It's a lot of information and I'll say it again. Do not, this is not your be all end all to KPARS. We, we use these sessions to entice, we use these sessions to engage, we use these sessions to enable you, but not necessarily without our help, you guys. I'm recording it, you can access the recording and watch it again, but I don't have the time to cover it all. For example, the tool set. I'm gonna give you a 10,000 uh, foot overview of the tool set. And I'm gonna mention this, you guys, because I know many of you on this call, have worked with KPARS for a long time and you do retouching for a living or people on your teams do retouching for a living. And if I were to ever to do a tool class, which maybe we will, so you can communicate with me via the chat or the question box, whichever one of those you have. Um, if I were to ever do a, se a section on a session on tools and like how to fix problematic faces, like your dark skin with a lot of blemishes, light skin with really deep wrinkles, or facial hair. You guys know these problems, those of you who are already working with, with KPARS. What I would do if I were to ever to run a session like that is I would call on those of you who would be willing to participate that I could recruit as part of the session, and it would be a great coming together of the minds. And you know, one of you might show your method, someone else might show their method, uh, that's what we do with Photoshop a lot of times. It's like, well, what's your method of madness for getting this thing done? Or what's your method of madness? So it would be a great opportunity. You guys can, you know, again, send me a question or a chat. I can't remember which box you have. You have one of those to send messages to me throughout the session. And, you know, let me know if that's something that any of you might be either interested in participating in or even interested in letting me recruit you so that you can share some good information uh, with the rest of the users. Okay, I'm about to jump over to DP2. One more question, guys, it's gonna need your hand raises. So get that hand raise tool ready for me. I wanna get a sense of who's an experienced KPARS user, who's an intermediate KPARS user, and who is a novice KPARS user. You know where you fall. If you think you fall into one cat more than one category, guys, Give me a hand raise twice, that's fine. Can I start with those of you who are experienced KPARS users? You can get experience really quickly if you're retouching a lot of images with KPARS in one, uh, in one season or even one week, you can become a very experienced KPARS user. Great, I see a few hands there and I'll clear those after you guys are done giving me those hands. Okay, so let's see with a raise of hands. Um, how about intermediate? If you feel like your KPAR skills are, wow, that's a lot of you, awesome. Okay, that's great. Some of you may have been giving me both and that's fine and great too. And then what about, I cleared everybody's hand raise. What about novice users? Either you don't use it or you're here evaluating it. <laughs> Tom Aplin gave me one of those. Tom, I don't buy it. <laughs> All right, so, and that's some of you too. All right, well, as expected, I kind of expected a range, you guys, um, and, and I don't know if you're, you're seeing this activity your, yourself. So I'm gonna hang out kind of somewhere in the middle, but I will cover kind of all workflows um, at a high level, at a quick level. So if everybody sees me, I'm switching over to DP2. I'm just doing a quick peek to make sure that you're seeing my DP2 screen now. And I believe that you are. So just a couple of logistic things. Again, communicate with me anytime during the session via your chat or your question box. I'll ask for questions at a couple of points during the session. I'll try to save some time um, at, the very, at the very end as well. 
you can give me a hand raise. I'll try my best to keep my eye on those hand raises throughout the session and that will indicate that you have a question and I'll open up your phone line. If we kind of get cut off from answering a lot of the questions that roll in during the session, what I'll do is I'll put together those questions collectively in an email and I will send it out to all of you that were on this call so that the, the learning can continue after this session. So first up guys, I'm gonna go through KPAR's interactive mode of operation. Um, let's say you have somehow, let's say one image, let me just refresh my screen here, make sure I'm looking at my latest data out of the database. Um, maybe your data comes in and you mark a retouch flag in the database and maybe retouch operators simply just right click on an image and they manually go into interactive mode and here I am in KPARS interactive mode. I should tell you guys, for those of you who do not have a KPARS dongle and you do not have KPARS credit because perhaps you're in this evaluation process, you can turn KPARS on on a trial basis inside of your system settings. Maybe I should show you guys that really quick. It's right here. It will be in the recording this way. You could pull out your cell phone and take a picture of it too. Um, it's this line right here uh, to turn on KPARS. So you can, you can run KPARS without credits, without a dongle. KPARS does work on a per face, per charge basis. You can talk to your account rep about Pricing, it really is dependent on volume, how many images you are retouching. But if you add this line, this one single auto retouching line to your system setting data table, you can run KPARS. It's very slow. It's a little painful because it's so slow and it's constantly going to look for a dongle. The only thing that you can't do is do the ultimate merge at the very end that says, okay, I want to take these changes and write them into the image file. You do need a credit to do that last part of the workflow, so you will not be able to do that part. Again, it's kind of a slow process, so we don't want you to evaluate the speed and throughput without a dongle, and you can talk to your reps more about that, um, that guys. So here I am in interactive mode. Uh, preferences is key. Um, when I first come in, face finding is off, if you guys work in interactive mode a lot, it's great to leave that face finding on. It selects the face for me, it zooms in, and then you can start using tool tools. This is the part of the class, guys, where I have to operate at a 10,000 foot level for this overview. We could get lost in these tools and, hey, how do I correct this face or this color? Or what about facial hair? Or what about a whole bunch of blemishes? What about freckles? There's so much to it, you guys. Um, I'm going to cover these at a high level. First of all, you have a series of filters. Filters in KPARS run automatically, but they run automatically based on the preference that's currently selected inside of filter and tool defaults. So for now, keep this preference um, menu in mind. Keep help in mind because we love help and DP2. We love the help files in here. The help files in here do a great job, guys, of describing which tool affects what type of pixels, small pixels, large pixels, the depth of a pixel. There's some really cool stuff going on here. If I run this filter, everything has a tooltip on it, the texture enhancer. I'm getting these defaults of fine detail it's finding some basically what this tool does guys is it looks for defects it looks for things like blemishes it's designed to distinguish itself from a blemish and, and a freckle um, and it's finding those in fine detail and also coarse detail and then this depth tool is really great for like crow's feet and facial lines that aren't always picked up with the fine and the coarse texture but I'll tell you this, guys, the reason I would recruit those of you who are experts with these tools is because you could very well have a different story than even the one that I just shared about using fine, coarse, and depth, depending on which 
type of image problematic thing that you're working on. Texture is designed to put texture back into the image. You can see as you move your sliders, you can clearly see on the retouched image on the right, you know, kind of what these sliders are ultimately, ultimately affecting. Um, so these are your filters and they're designed to run as soon as you select them and then you can move the sliders around more. This one smooths out the pixels that have been uh, affected. And then this one intensifies the shadows, hence smooth and shadow. And then you have eye and teeth whitening. And as soon as you press the filter, for example, I've already thrown an eye whitening value of one and an, a teeth whitening value of one um, these can be, you know, slid further up or down. You can always see the range. There's great shortcuts, guys, in here. There's a whole, I was just about to zoom in with my keyboard, you know, control plus zooms me in and, and or shift plus zooms me in, shift plus zooms me out. Holding down the space bar allows me to pan the image. Let me at least show you that, you guys, for, um, for the shortcuts because for those of you who are kind of getting getting to know it, oh, how did that come up? Security device, shortcuts, I'm not sure. Shortcuts are in here somewhere. Keyboard, shortcuts, I guess I'm not finding it that way. So when I first started it, or I don't know all these shortcuts, I would definitely prefer to have a printout of this next to me. Control Z, undo, kind of some normal ones that you might expect, but certainly rely on your keyboard shortcuts to help you guys out. Um, so that's a filter that runs as soon as you select it. The eye and teeth whitening, that's a filter. I'm stressing the word filter for a reason. As soon as you press a filter, they run automatically based on the current preferences that are set. You might actually, I'm going to actually delete this face and go back to the original. Um, if I had to manually add the face, I would do this with this add tool here. You might look at a face like this and say, oh, well, it's light complexion and a lot of blemishes. So what you might first do before you run any of these tools is you might go to your filter tool defaults. You guys, you ultimately decide what these defaults are. But you might say, okay, light skin, lots of blemishes. You might load that particular filter and then you would go ahead and choose you know, these filters and you would get the corresponding number sets, you guys, that are relative to the preference file that really describes both code values of the skin and also the amount of defects that need to be corrected in the image. There's a whole lot to say about that part of KPARS and I'm about to jump into DP2 and spend some time there because you know, when it comes to like really understanding, you know, well, what is it? Is it dark complexion? Is it light complexion? Is it a lot of blemishes? Is it not too many blemishes? There are numbers in DP2 that you can control also that when the images are assessed, they'll go into one of those four groupings automatically for you. That's moving into more automated territory, of course. And then the last thing I can really say here are these are your touch up tools. So the idea, anyway, there's no hard, fast rules, but the idea is to use the filters in here in interactive mode or in batch mode, which I'll show you next, and then do some touch up with these tools. This one's called a dust busting tool, but it's really for any light or dark defects that may be left in the image that you wanna come over here on the right and you know simply select and and remove. Or maybe I've noticed in this guy, because you guys know facial hair can be a problem. Maybe I want to use this clone tool and I want to restore some of the original texture. So the original image is on the left, the retouched image is on the right. I could change the size of my brush here. And maybe I want to restore some of that texture. So what I'm doing is I'm coming over to the original image and I'm just you know, running my brush over the facial hair. Notice on the retouched image on the right, guys, I know I'm moving so quickly. I hope you're okay with that. I have to move quickly through this content. But notice here on the retouched image on the right, it's kind of hard to see me circling, but I'm circling on the right. Notice the facial hair, the details gone, right? So if I just come back here and brush that over, you know, maybe I accidentally, I brush some blemishes over, 
well, I could, you know, undo that last operation, or that's when I might use one of these, you know, fine tuning touch up tools to clone an area or do some dust busting or something like that. So <laughs> that's my 10,000 foot overview of the tools in interactive mode. The last thing to do would be to either accept this change, this um, with a green check that uses a credit or reject it, which, you know, just removes this image from this interface, no, no charge, no change of the image. Depending on how my defaults are set up, I'm either overwriting the original, which I don't think really any of you do, or you're saving a copy um, of the original. So I will open it up now, guys, to questions or comments at this point as I transition um, you know what, I have my dongle in and it's probably pretty good that it's okay. For those of you who do need to run in kind of trial test mode, this is the message that, that you would see. Like if you really don't have a dongle with valid credits, I have to like unplug my dongle and plug it back in and then sometimes it kicks back in in just my setup. Um, so I'm not sure if that actually went all the way through um, or not because my dongle had just been sitting there idle for a while. But that's probably a good thing. So for those of you who maybe are interested in running in trial mode, you kind of get a sense of the, the process that you'll have to kind of jump over the, are those messages that come back and say, hey, you want to do something? You don't have any credits. And you can kind of say, well, okay, I'm just in here playing and basically just say okay to the message. So before I get into semi-automated mode of operation, which is batching these images, either from the order images table or from the subject information table, can I open up the phone line for anyone, answer any questions, any comments? I'm scrolling through my list if you hear me clicking because it's a long list of us on the call. So I wanna see if anybody gives me a hand raise and I'll open up your line. I'm looking for hand raises. Okay, well, maybe I haven't said enough for your questions yet. So let's get into semi-automated mode of operation. By the way, I don't wanna leave you in too much of suspense. Fully automated mode is using your KPARS commands. So this is where I'll spend most of my time because really all I'm gonna do for the automated mode is show you the KPARS commands file if you're a programmer, great, that's what you need to know. If you're not a programmer, but somebody's programming data into your DP2 database, then show them that KPARS commands file, and that's what they'll need to use to get images that have been somehow flagged in your workflow as needing retouching. Those are the commands, the set of commands that they'll need access to to move those into the tables that I'm gonna be manually moving these into now. But we call it semi-automated mode because it's a batch process. So I'm gonna select these 10 images and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say, instead of interactive, which I did with one image, you can only have one image selected from the order images table if you wanna just move that one image into interactive mode that I just showed you. This, however, takes these selected 10 images and moves them in just a second after I answer some questions here into a batch queue. Um, now this dialog box, it's not, it's not sticky, so you do have to make some settings. I should have prefaced this, I meant to, I forgot. The reason we wanted to run this KPARS class is because many of you on the call and perhaps others even, you, over the last several months, um, six months or whatever, you've submitted to our support team questions, KPARS questions, KPARS functionality requests. So keep those coming. I mean, keep your questions coming keep your KPARS request for functionality coming, especially in this session as it pertains to workflows. And it reminded me because we already had one on our, our, our plate, but we wanna hear it again and again. You know, That's kind of what drives guys our priority list is when we hear the same thing from many of you. So for example, you know, this dialog box, the settings that you last used for your previous order don't come back to you, you'd have to select those, those again. So, so keep that in mind. Um, I'm running in auto batch mode. That's the process I want to be in. I'm using the tool tips here. There's a lot of help in DP2, of course, for these 
dialogues, you know, by pressing F1 will hopefully be brought to the right help file. But auto batch is a process where during the analysis of the face, the software will pick the right setting. Remember those numbers I was showing you in interactive mode? Some had fours, some had twos. Those really control the, the level of correction that's going to be done on blemishes, the pixels that are identified as a defect, basically. You have control over those number sets. So if it's dark complexion with a lot of blemishes, if it's light complexion with just a few blemishes, you have these categories to, to put your settings in. And when auto batch is selected, it will automatically analyze the code value on the face and choose either a dark or a light complexion. And it'll automatically analyze the percentage of corrections that the algorithm needs to do, basically, facial lines, blemishes, things that are considered defects in the image automatically by the algorithm. And it will choose either a high setting that probably has higher numbers in those slider settings that I was showing you, or lower settings because there's not a lot of defects in the image. I'll be showing you guys that. You probably don't wanna overwrite your original, but I'm not here to tell you to not do that, but the original images will be saved in the same working directory with an underscore original tag. If you're in a network environment, which all of you guys are, please don't do what I'm doing here in my standalone environment. Don't store your temporary retouch data in a local path. Please store it in a network path so that when the final process of merging the corrections into the image, any workstation can do that. We're, re we're inserting images into tables in the database. Okay, so I'm gonna accept these defaults. Oh, another cool thing is, you know, we've, we've added so much to KPARS over the years. Some of what I'm showing you guys wasn't there when KPARS first hit the scene. Um, auto batching, picking the right file for you. I don't think that was there originally. Choosing a single face wasn't. We could have, be early on in the algorithm, we got tripped up looking at a necklace or pearls might look like a set of eyes. So you might have two faces selected in an image when there's not really two faces and you might have gotten charged for two faces, but we've come a long, long way since the early days of, of KPARS, even something like this. If you have a retouching operator and you wanna make sure that that operator does, does all of the job themselves, just so that the same kind of set of eyes and, and personal preferences are being applied to each and every image in that order. Or, or conversely, you could have multiple retouching operators, uh, which many, and I know both workflows, you guys have both of these workflows going on, and it might not matter who the work goes to because your retouching operators, you know, retouch images very similarly, and it's not like any one uh, retouching operator has necessarily a different preference or look or feel, but both workflows are accommodated. And that's what you could do to make sure that, you know, the person submitting the job is also going to take ownership of those images at this particular uh, workstation. Let me pause there, guys. Any questions? Hey, I'm looking for hand raises. Okay. Let me apply these settings to all images, and then I'm going to start to step you guys through. I'm going to go to the auto retouching toolbar. It's, it's not bad, taskbar. It's a little daunting, I think, if you're new to it. But if you break it out like this, I think it's instantly a lot less daunting. Um, there's two sets of buttons that go together. There's three parts of the KPARS uh, process. You saw me do interactive. That's total manual mode. You right click an image, interactively correct it, and save it. So that doesn't use any of these automated cues. Your, your cues that are in here, the retouch batch cue, um, the retouch review cue, and the retouch merge cue. These are your three cues where images will transfer automatically into these parts of the process. Although you can skip review. You know, for your underclass work, guys, many of you I know, you might throw a little bit of retouching on those faces that 
maybe don't have a whole lot of blemishes or defects yet, you might do a little something to those faces and you go right to print. And you might take a hit every once in a while on some of those faces, on some of that output. But, you know, I know many of you who are in a no review mode of operation, at least for some of your retouch work, not all of it, of course. So anyway, there's a retouch batch queue. And then there's a retouch process, that's the next button here, that runs to process images in the batch. What happens during this process, and I just sent, I just sent those images here. They're sitting there waiting to be processed, but I'm not running the process yet, or else these images would be long gone. And what happens during this process is the faces are found automatically, those corrections are applied automatically, uh, one of these setups, but when you first submit your images to the queue, it hasn't done the analysis of the face yet. So it just uses the first one alphabetically that's in your list of batch setups. I'm gonna bring that table up here too. And I'm gonna bring a lot of tables up in just a second. And it's an intricate, very sophisticated piece of software. So I don't want anyone you know, to kind of get blown away by the pieces of the puzzle that I'm a, about to uh, call up on the screen. You know, just look at this at a sit back, relax, and look at this as an overview. Maybe pull out one or two pieces, but please know that we are here to help you bring this to life in uh, a longer dedicated session than, than 45 minutes where I am rapidly getting through the information because there's so much to share with you. Anyway, at this point, the analysis of the face does, did not get done. And if you remember, I said, hey, auto batch these. So analyze the face, decide whether it's a, a, a darker code value or a lighter code value representing the skin complexion, and also decide if there's a lot of defects or not many defects. Those are the four categories that, we, that you need to work with, basically. And this is our default naming convention. Uh, dark high, dark low. You won't see that here yet, though, because they haven't been analyzed. You'll see that in the next step. We also have light high and, and light low, kind of covering those four pieces of, of the spectrum, hopefully, logically. Um, that sounds logical, hopefully. So they're sitting in this batch queue waiting to be processed. I'm going to go ahead and run this batch operation. So these two go hand in hand. I mean, things are happening. So this is replacing what I was doing in interactive mode, selecting the face. It's applying some number sets. It applies the number sets, guys, that are relative to whatever setup it decided to pick. If I refresh these, you can see I'm just about done. And now images are gone from the batch queue because the batch process run it. So that's these two set of uh, tasks here. Now let's take a look at what happened in the review queue. So now the batch processing has already taken place. So now look at this column. Now this column is saying, oh, well, based on an analysis of the face and what the code value of the skin tone was, I just, you know, the algorithm either selected dark or light, and it also either selected a low number set, probably, I mean, you guys can put whatever numbers and whatever names you, you want, um, or it picked a higher set of numbers because the percentage of the face that needed correcting, the percentage of the face that was deemed to be a defect. Um, there were more of those on some faces than, than other faces. So let me bring in that analysis data into the mix too. This is where I do bring in a lot of data, you guys, but don't let it, you know, don't let it throw you off. Don't let it be too daunting because uh, there's some pretty sophisticated stuff going on here and you need to understand how these algorithms, you know, make some of these decisions. So here's an analysis of these faces and they're really in order, guys, as these 10 images. So you can see the code value of the first image through there. You can see the percentage uh, of defects in the face that the algorithm you know, came up with, either a low percentage, which is a 0 0.0 or 0.1, or a high percentage, which of course is these higher 0.6 values. Well, I have to open up another table for you and bring this table in to the mix. So now this is the retouch batch setup table. Here's your it really matters what these names are. 
we have four criteria sets for you guys to work with when it comes to letting this algorithm find the right setting, again, based on the red code value of the face and the amount of defects that it found. What you guys call these over here, we don't, we don't care what these are called over here, but they do need to correspond to one of these four, four sets. You might have more setups in here, guys. You might have a setup that says, hey, this is my, my lab. This is, my, this is the one we use all the time. Where you would use it is manually. You wouldn't do auto batch because the minute you choose that checkbox for auto batch, you're saying use one of these four settings. But you can use one of your other settings in the interactive mode. You can apply one of your manual settings um, in batch mode. Just make sure auto batch isn't, isn't selected. And I know I'm covering a lot, guys. But again, let, let us clear the air with one-on-one -on -one sessions for, for those of you who, who need it. And this is the other key piece. You decide what the threshold is. So if we were to see the skin color threshold of 80, I can tell you that any analysis that's less than 80 got one of the dark settings. Any, any, any skin color value that's greater than this threshold of 80, they don't all have to be the same. You know, that's why I don't think I would dare uh, use anything in one of these sessions, guys, other than kind of the defaults. I mean, I have, I have numbers in a couple of my files that are all, the, all of our defaults are, are twos, but I will tell you that even if they're zeros, in these, and remember, these equate to sliders that I very sh I showed you in interactive mode. Even if these were zeros, in many cases, the algorithm would still do something. The algorithm is designed to find defects and do things automatically for you. This is an auto retouching awesome tool. And if these, you know, if you have a particularly um, complicated face, um, let's say problematic face, these tools might get you to where you need to be. And I say might because we do know of problematic faces where you decide to not take the hit of a credit so you don't run that face through KPARS. You send it off to one of your Photoshop <laughs> retouchers and you kind of use that as a fallback for perhaps some very problematic cases. That's one reason I would love to somehow coordinate with you guys a, uh, a tool, um, a KPARS tool class and call on your retouchers expertise to share with a KPARS collective community how you guys are using those tool sets. I think it would be an incredible learning experience for, for, for anyone, even experienced KPARS users. Imagine if Two of you or three of you were sharing your own KPARS tools. You know, I click on this first and then I clone and then I go back to the filter and I, you know, I use it differently. Imagine what you guys would, would gather and glean from a different user of those tools. And we don't always have those opportunities to come together like we used to. So if we put a session, you know, around that, I think that would be really cool. So again, if anyone's interested, send a chat, send a question, send your comments, send your um, you know, feature requests during this session and or after this session. So you guys set these thresholds uh, similarly with the defect threshold. Anything that's less than this 0.26, and that's considered a, a, a percentage based on the number of defects that it actually found. Anything that falls under this threshold is getting one of these low setups. Anything that's higher than this threshold has been presented with one of the higher. And again, that assumes, guys, that your, that your high um, settings like these two here do have higher numbers. Do they have to? No. Would they probably uh, yeah, you guys can tell me for sure, but I've worked with enough of you that uh, one of you just told me last week that, yeah, for my problematic faces, I set all these numbers to the highest and, you know, I work with it from there and maybe back off uh, where and when needed. So these are a lot of tables, a lot of data coming together. Um, but the one good thing, you know, this is recording. You could stop the video, you could open these tables, 
you know, you could be looking at mine, you could be looking at your faces, you could be getting all of this key data to help you guys decide what should your thresholds be, what should your number sets be. Well, you're really going to get to what your number sets would be by working with the tool interactively and sliding those toolbars around and, and really performing, you know, the, the corrections on the faces and coming up with the right number set that way. So I'm going to move these into review mode, but I'm going to pause here and look down my list for questions, you guys, comments. If you give me a hand raise, I'll open up your phone line. I hope I'm making you feel welcome, that you're welcome to do that anytime. Can't you tell how much I slow down? <laughs> I slow down dramatically. <laughs> All right, I will keep going then. Let me close up some of these tables. Notice the images are setting in, sitting here in a review queue. If I run the review process, remember these work in pairs, batch queue, batch process, review queue, review process, merge automatically kicks in. That's the last process that uses a credit. And when I accept the image, as long as my dongle is being read okay, the merge process will automatically kick in. So as soon as I come in, to um, review. Now remember, processing has already been done. Faces have been found. Either a dark or light setting that already has numbers associated has already been applied. Hopefully, in a lot of cases, you're saying, okay, I like what the algorithm did. Did you know this face doesn't didn't really have a whole lot of you know problems to begin with. By the way, I had already optimized these images. Well, the best. I can do as far as density and color. So you, when, when you optimize your images for density and color, you're seeing that on these faces in, in KPARS. So there is a kind of best practice mode of operation and you'd wanna make sure that your images are, are color corrected and optimized before getting here. The goal is that the filters have already run, right? You remember the filters, this guy, this shadow and texture, eye whitening, teeth whitening. The idea now is to do some quick touch up and say, oh, okay, maybe all I need to do is, you know, give this guy a little bit of beard detail back and I'm good to go. Select it and the next one comes in, you know, and then I'm holding my shift key, I'm panning on the image, I'm saying, okay, I really like this. I'm looking at the original on the left the retouched on the right. It looks like it did actually get down into some of this area here. So I just happened to notice that. Sorry, I can't get to it. I think I'm on the right setting for this to happen. So I might come in here and, and get some of this, you know, necklace uh, detail back here. And then I might accept this one and then the next one comes in and so on and, and so forth. Can I, can I bring the, the, the filter set up? Absolutely. But it wants me to select the face again because the yellow line indicates what was done in the batch process. And now the red line, it's hard to tell because they kind of land on top of each other, indicates what I'm about to do you know, manually, in other words, on top of, of what the automatic batch processing does. Um, I could get lost in this part of it, guys. So I'm just going to kind of scream through this because I still have to get back and show you how to run this batch process from the subject information table two, two which works a little bit more automatically. So we're approaching, we're in this semi-automated territory when you're running your images through a batch processor like I just did and now reviewing them. But I also want to talk about doing it from your subject information table and also perhaps even skipping this review process altogether. I just wanna make sure that you know how to do that. But again, I think this is a good time to pause. Let me look for hand raises. Questions, comments. I could of course not accept those. And in that case, the image, I think I said it before when I was in interactive mode, um, I'll just do a couple things on this one to throw a couple other things at you guys. You know, maybe on this one, this light and dark defect is awesome. You know, I can come over here on the right on the tooth that I see and I can just quickly 
do a, a touch up, maybe put some texture back and, and things like that. So the idea is when you're in batch process to let the filters do the work that have already been done. And then hopefully when you get here on the vast majority of your faces, you can then just use these quick touch up tools, maybe go back and run a filter, but you know, ideally you're just doing a little bit of touch up. Okay, let me close these out. Oh, this is one I wanted to show you actually, uh, just cause this kind of presents a different set of, um, you know, a teacher versus a, a, a student. I wanted to show you that at least in my case, when I use this um, texture enhancer that finds fine defects um, and then coarser defects, when it comes to you know facial lines, expression lines, this depth tool it, it is kind of another way of getting to pixels that were not picked up by either the fine texture tool or the coarse um, texture tool or the coarse tool, and then adding texture back in. I'm, I'm not a retoucher. <laughs> Please don't evaluate my retouching skills because I I can guarantee not a one of you would hire me based on based on those skills. So um, I'm gonna go back to DP2, just running through these, wanted to clear them all out. Um, some, I think I did, let me see what happened here. Let's see if my dongle was cooperating. Yeah, so in some cases my, my dongle, since I unplugged it and plugged it back in, the green is indicating that now those images have been retouched. There's a flag in the database to retouch it, there's a flag in the database that says that auto retouching is complete. And because I had my images set to uh, save the original as the original, no need to switch your images that are known about in the database. Of course, we just use the same original path to that image and uh, save an original along the way. So that's all very transparent for you guys. All right, let me show you subject uh, information, keeping in mind that some of these are done, but I think those are the rows I worked with. I used my country column to say kind of yes or no to uh, retouching. Um, I threw some, I mean, I don't know, maybe I last left this set up with codes, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to take a look in my subject information table setup for my IDK parse columns. At the very end of the list is where you'll find one to set up your KPARS column in your subject information table, and then the other to actually do something. Yeah, so I actually did set these up to run KPARS codes. Uh, there's a way to build codes. It's really, uh, if you guys are familiar with retouching codes, uh, we, we use that same interface to define um, one of these batch setups. This gets a little confusing and I, I wish I could explain it in a way that instantly made it clear, but because it's pretty deep and because it's pretty complex, there's a way for you to set up these physical numbers or codes that basically represent one of, one of these guys. Um, so that's one way that you could define a column inside of your subject information table. You could define it as a retouch setup name. And then in that case, this column, I'm using country, would accept a batch setup name. And in the third case, you could say, okay, I just want some remote order entry program or my programmer to send me an on or off switch. So if something's in the column, it's turned on. If something's not in the column or if it's a zero, then it's, it's turned off. So I'm running really low on time here, guys, but I, I feel like I, I have hopefully paused enough throughout to address some questions. So please submit your questions in these last couple of minutes via the question box or the chat box, or hit us up after this via the support portal or an email. I'm gonna add these images from here to the KPARS batch. I am gonna start the process and basically it submitted seven out of the 10 to the batch because a few of these are zeros. So I will, um, I'll start that and because they're kind of already in process, I, I get that message. One thing I did wanna show you guys is that this dialogue 
because I wasn't presented with that kind of long box dialogue, I want to show you that when you run them from your subject information table, you are calling on your auto retouching default configuration settings. And these guys are sticky. And so the, the one that I showed you when you right click from your images, that dialogue's not sticky. You have to set those again. This dialogue is sticky, so it will remember what you want to do, like do you want to review images or do you don't want to review images? Um, do you want to auto merge on accept? Do you want to overwrite originals or not? So, you know, you could save these settings here because it's kind of mysterious if you don't know when you say, you know, add to KPARS batch. Well, what setup is it using? It's it's currently using that that setup and I'm kind of midstream here. So that's why I'm getting these messages that some of these images are already in play and in progress. Um, so from there, I mean, so guys, um, so from there, kind of normal things would would happen. You would either be reviewing your images or not reviewing. You saw that that was no review, but if I refresh these, I think these were already in there, but with no review selected, these would come in uh, to the batch process with no review. They would get batch process and they would instantly be sent to the merge queue <coughs> without any review operation whatsoever. And that's the workflow that I mentioned where for maybe some of your underclass work, you might be operating in a no review mode. You may still have to take a hit once in a while and go back and retouch that image based on the output or the print that you got. Um, but ideally, you know, some workflows you might not review where other workflows with more problematic faces like seniors, you never know what you're gonna get. You never know if they're gonna have facial hair and problems like that, I'm not so sure you're in a no review mode for more sophisticated um, type problems. One more second here, you guys. I just wanted to show you the kpars commands.txt file. You'll find it in scripts. So the kpars commands are in their own dedicated commands file. They are not part of commands.txt. This is how coming in from the outside using a command file, if you're already moving data into DP2 with a command file, if you're a programmer, if you're not a programmer, but you know you're working with programmers, please share this file with them. And if you wanted to take away all the right clicks that I just showed you guys from the order images table, if you wanna move beyond setting up a column in your subject information table and right clicking on those and submitting those to the batch queue, those are all great processes and they are designed to be streamlined. If you think they could be more streamlined, let us know. But we already have a way uh, in the system if you're you know, fully automated and have programmatic help and support, this is your way to eliminate guys all those clicks. And just for example, submit your work directly to that KPARS batch queue and then start the batch process and then pick up either reviewing or not reviewing images from there. So I did go over, I usually pride myself on not going over you guys because I know how excited you are to probably get back to work, but I won't go anywhere. If anyone you know, wants to give me a hand raise here, if you wanna make a comment, please, all comments are welcome. Any questions, any requests? Hey, Jenny, thanks for that. I'm opening up the line, Jenny, how are you? I'm fine, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you great, okay. thanks for coming on the line. I appreciate it. Just checking. Uh, so my employee here was telling me about an instance that he's having where it's selecting phantom faces in the background and in their clothing and other spots within the image um, when we are only running like single face. Uh, oh, so you are running single face. That's why I opened this up on my screen to make sure, depending how you, on how you're inserting images, either from here using the defaults or when you do it from here, you're mm -hmm. making sure that the single face is selected and you're still getting random non-faces selected. Yeah, kind of like a paranormal activity type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you describe the type of uh, content in the image that would 
you know, it'll look kind of like um, a combination of like what would be a face if it was just shadowed, kind of like eye socket shadowed. It looks for kind of like where a nose would be and then like a mouth from what I've seen. He is experiencing something like else. Clothing. It, it will put it on like blank walls or a basketball or a dress. Did you hear that? So you see it a fair amount. Yes. yes. <laughs> and that's after I told you guys that we had come so far <laughs> in selecting <laughs> phantom faces, huh? Um, we we'd have... love to see those. We, we'd love to see those images. Would you, Jenny, would you mind zipping a few up and submitting those two up to us to our support portal? Sure thing. We can that would be, I, I, I mean, I wish I had right now a, a fix that said, oh, you're not pressing this button over here. And I'm sorry that I do not have that. Oh, no but worries. yeah, if we can, if we can learn from you guys, if we can experience and get to know your pain points, and then if we can decide you know, as a development team, if there's something that we could better do or improve for you, then that's certainly part of our evaluation process. So the more problematic type results like this that we know about, the better equipped we can be to potentially, potentially help you guys. Okay. If you would do that, that would be great. Absolutely. Appreciate the time. Thank you. I, I hope you, you guys sound, by the way, Jenny, you guys sound obviously very experienced. So I hope that, you know, maybe you were able to pick up on a couple of things here and there from a workflow perspective. If not, I guess this gives us the opportunity to, to follow up on this. So I appreciate you guys being here. Oh, we have various levels of experience in the room. We have expert. I would say I'm kind of in the middle because of promotion sake. And then we have somebody that's not using it very regularly here as well. So we got a little bit of everyone here. And just one more question, you guys. Is this something that you've kind of always seen KPARs do? Or it's not something that kind of instantly started, but it wasn't happening before, anything like that? I would say that prior, it wasn't as consistent at this point, we'll say last six months. Yeah, about really? You think you're seeing it more in the last six months? We're not on the current version of DP2 either. I want to say right off the bat, we're probably on 19. Okay. Well, I, I think you'd be okay. I, I think you'd be okay there, really. I don't okay. think there's, yeah, it, we haven't done. But one reason we wanted to connect with you guys is to see what potential work we, we might do, you know, based on what we hear from you guys. But I, I know that we haven't um, done it as of yet, but but the other um, team members, support and development team members that are on the call were uh, specifically asking that, you know, is is it something that you're just seeing? Um, obviously, it's not just the real face that's being selected. It's these other things in the image that are showing up as faces. And right. now, does, are, are you guys running in review mode? So you're always reviewing anyway, so you can kind of yeah. toggle and deselect those, but it would obviously be most efficient if it weren't selected in the first place. We review every image. We had a contractor set up like automation as far as the batching and everything like that, getting them into uh -huh. the batch. Uh, we still have to open up the merge queues, the batch queues and everything like that to initiate them. And then it kind of, KPARS naturally takes over from that point. Do you um, run this auto merge on, is that a setting that you could maybe? It's already, from? It's yeah. already baked in. Okay. As far as right. the contractor setting it up. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate that input, you guys. Um, sorry about those pain points. If you wouldn't mind zipping up some images so that we can experience it ourselves and we can let you know, okay? Yeah, they're definitely worth a giggle at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. I appreciate it. I'm sure I won't know what to actually, you know, do with those faces as far as correcting them, but it'll be fun for us to see what phantom faces get selected. So thanks, Jenny and everyone there. I appreciate it. Please keep the communication alive and well. We love hearing from you guys. Thanks for being here, everybody. Take care. Have a great afternoon.